hunting as a kid, I wasn't really ever successful. <laughs> it was kind of a, you know, the learning curve. It wasn't about killing a deer. It was really just about being out, kind of like part of the family tradition, meeting up with uncles and cousins at the ranch and having a good time at the cabin and sharing stories. But I wasn't ever really successful in terms of harvesting an animal until much later in life. I turned 21 and I moved to Alaska. In Alaska, I really got the bite for fishing and really became an avid fly fisherman there and guided for a lodge. That's where my, my fly fishing career, so to speak, really took off. And it was when I moved back from Alaska to, to New Mexico that I really focused on, okay, I'm gonna get serious about this hunting thing. Our wildlife is a finite source and the bottom line is there's more demand than there is supply. You have uh, three or four sheep tags in a certain area and you might have a thousand to 1500 people applying for four tags. You can't win if you, if you don't play, but you don't have any expectations of it ever happening. I've been applying for uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep as long as I've been able to apply for the hunts. I got my hunter safety card when I was 11 or 12, started applying for hunts and have never drawn. The morning I woke up and saw that I had drawn the bighorn sheep, to be honest, I didn't really believe what I saw on the screen. So I had to call the game and fish and, and take a screenshot of what I saw in just in case it was a, a mistake. Because <laughs> I didn't believe that I had drawn a once in a lifetime Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep tag. The tag I drew was the Rio Grande uh, del Norte National Monument. Being from Santa Fe, basically an hour, hour and a half drive away. The unit starts at Taos Junction Bridge in Pilar area and goes all the way to the Colorado state line, 50 miles. That's a lot of canyon, a lot of gorge to explore. And there's only a couple of ways to cross the Taos Gorge Bridge or the John Dunn Bridge. I would work basically in increments and start documenting where I would find sheep and possible access points for the sheep. That was a bigger part of the hunt than the actual releasing of the arrow because I got to spend that many days doing it and just getting a little more intimate with the animals, so to speak, and learning where they lived and seeing their habits. It was really, really such an awesome experience. Sheep uh, that I would see time and time again, one that had a big scar right here between his eyes, I named him Scarface and one sheep that I saw that was definitely eating good. So I nicknamed him the Lauterberger Ram. <laughs> he was throwing some cheese on that grass. <laughs> um, so it's fun. Uh, again, that's just part of the experience, going out and seeing sheep and giving them nicknames and, and seeing unique traits and even locations that you just see them time and time again. Uh, again, that was just all part of the experience. About halfway through the scouting season, kind of decided that I wasn't so much set on taking a ram that kind of fit the typical trophy in terms of big width curls that carried its mass all the way and kind of switched my focus onto an animal that was maybe more unique, that kind of stood out, uh, that had some character. It was Saturday, October 20th and being that it's a five month hunt, didn't have a lot of pressure to punch my tag. I had glassed up this particular ram at about 8.30 or 9 in the morning. Could tell that he was an exceptionally wide ram, but he was about a mile away and he was right on the edge of the rim and there wasn't a whole lot of cover between where I was and he was. And so the chances of him seeing me 
was pretty high. So I, I let him be and continued hunting and glassing and scouting for the majority of the day. And it was on the way back, that same sheep from the morning had worked his way from the rim about three quarters of a mile into the pinons to bed for the day. And I really got a close up look at him. He had that uniqueness, that character that I was talking about. I decided I would put a stock on him with my bow. Good shot. It's such a unique experience that, that so few people get to enjoy drawing a sheep tag. Being able to spend that much time basically in my backyard where I've spent countless days fishing and hiking, just really brought home how special a place we live in. Since I took the sheep with a bow and arrow, it kind of goes into a separate category in terms of the record books. He, he landed up uh, being 27 and 5 eighths uh, inches at his widest point, almost 28 inches wide with a bow and arrow. We'll put him in the top 10 sheep in the world for how wide his, uh, his span is, which is pretty cool. It's just icing on the cake to have the opportunity I had and then to take a sheep as unique as that is really just something that I'll uh, remember forever. There's people that come from all angles of the world to come spend a week here or two weeks here because it's so beautiful. And we live here and this is our backyard, so it's easy to take for granted. And, uh, how special a place it is. But having this opportunity really kind of brought me back down to, to that level, to a greater appreciation for our land and our waters and our blue skies and um, our clean air and just everything that makes this place so special. It's here today and could be gone tomorrow. Um, and so just really appreciate what we have and, and uh, take care of it for not only for us to enjoy, but for our kids and, and future generations.